test, I'm going to ask you for this one. Right? But I want you to see both of them because on the news, this is what you see. Right? Let, let me explain the, verbally. I'm not going to write this out. You probably will want to write this down. Here's the interpretation. In English, this is what this means. I don't know exactly what the population proportion is for whatever you're talking about. Here would be the correct number of guesses um, that a touch therapist would have. I don't know what the exact population proportion is. But I am 95% sure. Where am I getting 95%? Confidence interval. Confidence, what's it called? Confidence Level? For your confidence interval. I don't know what the exact population value of the population proportion is, but I'm 95% sure that it will fall in this range, the range that I've given you, that it will fall in my confidence interval, basically. I don't know what the exact value of the population proportion is, but I'm 95% sure it will fall in my confidence interval. Do you understand the interpretation? Hey, are you 100% sure? No. 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 Are you ever going to be 100% sure? No. No, but 95 is pretty good though, right? Pretty sure. 99 is even more sure. What would 99, look at the board with me, what would 99% confident do to this interval? Why? Look at your E. Your E right here is based on your critical value. This number goes up. This number goes up. That number that means you're adding something bigger and subtracting something bigger. Your, your range is going to spread out a little bit more. So to be more confident, your range expands. If you, if you need to be less confident, you're like, ah, 90% is fine. It's going to be really small. It's going to be nice. So I'm 90% sure it's in there. Sometimes that works. 95%, that's typically what you see. On the news, you'd see, you probably wouldn't see that. You probably wouldn't see that. They're going to say something like this. They're going to say, I don't know exactly what the population proportion is, but I'm pretty sure it's around 44. Plus or minus 6%. Okay. That means, are, do they know it's exactly 44? No, not, not a chance. There's no way they're going to be that accurate. Now, however, their sample sizes sometimes are so incredibly large, they take thousands of people. We've only taken 280. Sometimes they're so large that their plus and minus is really, really small. So they can afford to be that accurate. They say, yeah, it, you know what, it's 44. We've taken 10,000 people. I mean, that's a really good cross-section of America, so we're going to be almost darn sure that it's, it's really, really small. Do you guys get the difference? That's what this does. As your sample size goes up, look at the board here. As your sample size goes up, this fraction gets smaller, which means the square root gets smaller, which means when you multiply it by a critical value, that gets smaller. So sample size goes up, your interval really shrinks. Does that make sense? How many people feel pretty good about what we've just, just talked about so far? Okay, you write that little piece of information down as well. As N goes up, sample size goes up, your confidence interval shrinks a little bit. Your E decreases. So little note, because of that, as N increases, E decreases. Not D Reese's. That's what happened to Halloween. All the kids took my Reese's. <laughs> Get it? It's funny. By the way, Target right now, they got a bag of skills for 75 cents. Huge bag. Got all their candy. On those, oh, those little pumpkin things, you know, the candy corn pumpkin things? Oh, they're awesome. 74 cents. Where are they at? Target. No, yours, the one that you bought. Sure. Oh, I ate them. <laughs> I, give me two weeks, I'm going I'm to be this big. I, I love those things. So good. Okay, as N goes up, E goes down. Decreases. That's the only thing you can change about this thing. Look at the board with me, please. Again, only thing you can change here. Can you change your B hat? No. You can't change your sample. Can you change your Q hat? No, it's based on B hat. Can you change your N? Yes. Can you change your confidence? No, you're not going to change that. You don't want to change that. That's going to be given to you. The only thing you can do as a, as a like a... A business, if you were in business and want to be confident about your decision, which this is what we're going to use that in the next section, next chapter, uh, is you can increase your sample size to be more certain or shrink your interval. That's what you can do here. Sample size is all about. Speaking of, we're going to find a way right now to kind of manipulate what we want to do. You ready how you can... Are you ready to find out how you can use statistics to say whatever you want to say? Okay. Now, you can't lie. You can't all-out lie. But 
here's the idea. You can use statistics to give a certain margin of error. What, what, what I mean by that is, if I tell you, look, folks, um, I want to be certain that my point estimate is really, really close to the population proportion. I want to make sure that whatever sample we take, what they say is what it is. For instance, like across America, they say, I, I want such a, I want a sample size that allows me to say that whatever their, their opinion of the president is, is fact. So basically there is no plus or minus. There's like maybe 1% difference. It's very, very small. We can do that. It's called finding the required sample size. Here's what it says. Given a margin of error, given an E, you can find a sample size big enough to make it happen. <coughs> given an E, that's the margin of error. Not E, okay, e and E. You're not taking E. Given, whatever. <laughs> Did I just make a joke? No, I, really. <laughs> I didn't mean to, at least. If, I mean, uh, E margin of error. Um, if you're given an E, you can find this required sample size and make that E happen. Given an E, you can find the sample size needed to get that E. We're going to do the algebra on this thing, and that's where we'll, we'll stop today. You ready for the algebra? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do quick algebra. Quick algebra, what letter are we trying to solve for? E. Nope, it's always solved for D. N. N. Trying to solve for N, I want the sample size out of this yes. thing. So I want, to, I want you to tell me that basically this, you're going to be given this number, find what this needs to be to make it happen. This is kind of an interesting thing here. So we're solving for N, what do I need to get rid of N? Good, so E over Z Alpha over 2 equals the square root of p hat q hat over n. Get rid of a square root. What lets you do it? Square. 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 Great. Square both sides. If I square both sides, once carefully, please, I'm going to have, let's see, I want you to write this. Yeah. I'm going to have e squared over z alpha over 2 squared equals p hat q hat n. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. What do I want to do now? Figure out the best way I want to. I'll teach you a little trick here. Little trick, if you want to solve for this thing, you can switch these, these two, this numerator with this denominator. Uh, you multiply by n on both sides, you divide by e squared on both sides. Basically, these things switch. So you would get n over z alpha over 2 squared equals p hat q hat over e squared. There's one more quick step. One more quick, quick step is get rid of the z alpha over 2 squared. How do you do it? Great. If we multiply, we get n equals z alpha over 2 squared times p hat times q hat over E squared. There's two of them. Here's option one. Yeah, you're not in yet. I know you put your stuff away already. Um, here's option number one. If you know P hat and Q hat,
please listen for a second. If you know P hat and Q hat, you can find the sample size to make your E happen. However, this should never happen. Why? What are P hat and Q hat? They are what? They're not one. From what? A portion or a sample? From a sample. So you're going to find the sample size needed by already having a sample? Does that make sense? No. So you're going to use the worst case scenario in most times. If this happens to happen, if you have the P hat, Q hat, great. This is a best case scenario. A worst case scenario is, I don't know. We're going to assume it's 50-50. 50-50 would be a worst case scenario for success and failure. So here's the other worst case scenario if you are actually doing this in the real world. 50-50, what's 0.5 times 0.5? Please don't just add those. What's 0 0.5 times 0 0.5? That's the worst case scenario. Where P hat, Q hat go? You're assuming P hat and Q hat are both 0.5. Multiply those things together, you get 0.25. This is the worst case scenario. That's how you can use E to find the required sample size to get your margin error. Write those down. We'll practice one example next time, and we'll call it good on this section. Okay, so last time we were talking about these things called confidence intervals, and we kind of realized what that is at this point. We've talked about it for a, for a week now. We're estimating a population proportion, in this case, or a population parameter, by using a sample statistic, that's a point estimate, and making a range out of it, to which we're a certain level of confident that our actual proportion parameter will fall in that range. Now, we, we did look at this one other way. It was kind of interesting. We can actually make a margin of error, whatever size we want it to be. And we did that with some algebra. We worked around our original margin of error equation to figure out n equals this, this expression right here. There are our, our letters. We need to know what those mean. Can you tell me what the z alpha over 2 actually is? What, what is that? What now? The, well, it's given by the confidence level, but it's not, it isn't the confidence level. Confidence level would be like 90%. You're never going to put 90% there. Uh, what is the z? It is a z-score, but in this case, we call it, it has a special name, critical value. That's right. The z-score is a critical value. Whenever you see the z alpha over 2, it says the critical value or the z-score given by a certain level of confidence. That's what that means. Uh, now, we all should know this one. What's p hat? Population or sample? Sample. Yeah, it wasn't sample population. It's sample proportion of successes and... And <coughs> margin, of error. margin of error, very good. This is what we normally find in like a another situation. The first, the first way. Now we're we're going another way and finding and sample size. We're actually asking what sample size is needed. Here's the whole point here. We're asking what sample size is needed in order to create this margin of error. Because a lot of times, you want to be very specific. I mean, are you going to want to go up to someone and go, oh, yeah, um, the proportion of people who have blonde hair is 60%, plus or minus 30%. Is that a good estimate? Probably not, because they're going to be like, well, <laughs> that's between 30 and 90%. You're just saying, between. I'm pretty sure between 30 and 90% of people have blonde hair. Is that a very good Confidence interval? No, you can be 95% confident, but you're not saying anything. You're not saying anything. You're saying, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure between 30 and 90% of people have blonde hair. That's probably going to happen. So it, instead, we want to say, all right, we want to take a big enough sample size to ensure a certain margin of error. Say your boss says, look, 